this case reminds me that some people just have unlimited gall. Yeah. You give her a notice that you're moving out at the end of the month and you're suing her because she locked you out two days earlier even though you weren't paying rent and you essentially stole some of her land by engaging in this side deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's Whatever. Um, I think I'm, it's you know, outrageous. I, I'm, I'm just going to go going? Give it to her. Going I'm to the done. property? You know, I don't need this, man. Then you shouldn't have sued her. That's right. You brought the lawsuit after engaging in these egregious, ridiculous transactions mm -hmm. and not paying her any money. Right. So if you want to take your toys and go home, you never should have sued her. I'm not going to sit here you and lie hoping, to you. were hoping, you know what? You were hoping you'd end up in a courtroom with some judge who had 50 people and wouldn't have time to dig into how outrageous your behavior is. That so let's be. talk about your countersuit. You're suing for breach of contract, the rent that you didn't get while all this side money's being made but also for punitive damages. You don't normally get punitive damages for breaching a contract. What about a headache? <laughs> <laughs> I think that part of your claim that kind of relates to punitive damages is really the intentional and willful disregard of your rights. By subletting to him without your permission, not just in violation of the lease, but it deprived you of an opportunity to further exploit the land and you wanted to. So I, I kind of see fraud. And you do get punitive damages from fraud. I don't have anything else. We're going to excuse deliberate. all the parties uh, while we deliberate in this matter, but I think it's going to be a quick deliberation. You could you. step out. This courtroom is now in recess. Well, I think that it's pretty clear we need to dismiss that complaint. <laughs> you think? I think that this is a guy who knew he gave notice, knew he wasn't going to pay, was gone for the entire month of September anyway. So, yeah, he's got no cause of action that would be sustained based on any amount of evidence. And more egregious was the fact that he had the nerve to make an agreement with the witness <laughs> for a year. Because he's figuring that no matter when he left, the guy wasn't going to come after him for $450. Uh, right. And once the cattle was there, they were there. And I think the defendant acted very honorably by saying, look, I'll honor the contract. My decision would be to award her money on the counterclaim. I want to give her the punitive damages because I really feel that, that he was egregious in bringing on this other person to kind of rip him off as well. He owes her for August and September, and he owes her the late fees, which were clear and set forth in the lease. She's entitled to the $1,150 for rent, and $1,350 I'm perfectly fine with for giving the punitive damages, $2,950. That's what I would give her on the counter suit. I agree. Yep, I'm on board. Okay, very All good. On board. Unanimous. You know, sometimes things, unpredictable things happen in people's lives. Mr. Nichols, your significant other was very ill. Ma'am, you had some personal issues as well. And things don't always go the way we plan. You know, they say people make plans, God laughs. But there are some things that you can be accountable for. Payment of rent is not one of those things that should be excusable. There's no way, sir, that we could see our way clear to having the defendant pay you $5,000 for what would be an illegal lockout, according to you, when in fact you weren't even there anyway and you hadn't paid and you'd given notice. So we're going to dismiss your complaint and we're unanimous about that. But we did look at your counterclaim as well very carefully. And we do feel that you are entitled to August and September rent, which would be $1,000, plus the late fees, which would be $1,150. We don't feel that you're responsible for an illegal lockout. In fact, we do feel that you're entitled to punitive damages for the behavior of the plaintiff in the unauthorized sublet. But in any event, you also are entitled to $450, not $2,000. The plaintiff did not get $2,000 for the lease. He got that in exchange for sale of different items. So the total we agree unanimously that you would be entitled to on your counterclaim is $2,950. And as to you, Mr. Nichols, we've agreed to dismiss the complaint. That's unanimous. And that's the verdict of the court on each of these matters.